Welcome to my mugging masterclass. It's ugly and it's nasty, but with the right training, anyone can learn to get out of trouble. Now, the key thing is always try and escape. That's the number one lesson. But if you can't, this is how you fight back. The moves you're about to see are dangerous, so please don't try them at home. Here's the scenario. I've left my car in a small car park behind some shops. From the shadows, a guy jumps me and he demands the keys. Give me the keys! I don't know if he's got a weapon on him. I'm not going to take a chance. <laughs> he might be carrying a knife, and in a dark alley, it's difficult to see a blade. So first, I elbow him in the chin, then I punch him in the groin. Finally, I use the car door to knock him out and then try and make my escape. He might have mates with him, so I still need to look alive. There are two more attackers out there. As it turns out, both of these boys have got blades. I restrain one while I kick the other one back to give myself a bit of breathing space. Then I apply a lock on the hand that's holding the knife and use that to push him backwards, knocking him out. Now I just need to deal with his final attacker who's got a knife and he's blocking my escape. I've got no choice, I can't run, I've got to defend myself. He slashes at me, but I block him. I pull him hard into a kick in the gut and that makes him double over so the axe kick can finally bring him down. These techniques might look complicated, but they're all based on some really simple moves. So you bought yourself a little bit of time, but what if your attacker's absolutely intent on catching you? Can you get away? Well, I'm gonna do a little experiment now with those nice young ladies up there. You see, I think I can escape from these very fast athletic champions. Technically, on paper, they're quicker than me, but that's on a track. This is the streets. Montel is a European 100 and 200 meter champion. She's capable of sprinting 100 meters in 11 seconds. Sandra is a youth triple jump champion. And finally, there's Bella, who's tipped to be the next 800 meter world champion. To make it simpler for the girls, we've all agreed to stick to this straightforward route. They'll chase me around the block and keep going till they catch me. They'll give me a short head start and then the chase is on. Three, two, one. You have to say they seem confident because this looks more like a trot than a sprint. Maybe they've underestimated me. After one lap of 800 meters, they've still not caught up with me and embarrassed, they try and speed up to close the distance. But after two laps, they lose heart. They've now run about a mile. Confused, they give up. Could I really have been that much faster? Go home, mate. Come here. That's him, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Move like the clappers, I do. Oh, I bet Move you like do. You don't. We can see it. No way. OK, time to explain how I did it. Do you want to know what I did? Serious, yeah? Yeah. Right. My first move was as I ran around the corner, I ducked down behind this low wall. My next move was to double back on myself, ditching the long coat, because that's what they're looking for. Then, by borrowing a workman's safety vest, I changed my colour. In a rush, people use a simple criteria to identify what they're after, like colour, for example. Right, lads. The girls were looking for someone in black. I'm now in a fetching day glow. My final move relies on the fact that the human eye is very adept at spotting moving objects, but stays still and you're more difficult to spot. That's me in the background. I've now joined a crowd because they're still looking for an individual. These girls are outwitted by a few simple deceptions. You don't need to be the fastest runner in the world to get away. This isn't about gold medals, it's about escaping with your life. As well as using your legs, you've got to use your wits. You can't catch me if you can't find me. We've all come across people who've had one too many. This is Bar Brawl Masterclass. It's how to defend yourself in an all-out fight. It's about what's legit and what's out of order. The moves you're about to see are dangerous, so please, don't try them in your local. So what if you find yourself in a bar trying to have a quiet drink? 
and someone's had one too many. Screaming orgasm, please, barman. This whole incident is sparked off by this simple accidental elbow nudge. Sorry, mate, didn't mean that. You try and pacify him, he's having none of it. Can I buy you another drink? Really, really sorry. Another drink, yeah. I'll buy you another yeah. drink. Sorry, you another drink? Yeah. yeah. First, I block the blow with the ashtray. I slip my hand behind his neck and drive him down hard onto my knee. It's at this point that I should try to make my escape. This final punch would certainly be deemed too excessive. Before I know what's what, I'm jumped on by his mate, who gets several good punches in. He pulls my head back, he's going for the throat. I regain composure, block his chop, and then run him into a table, knocking him clean out. Suddenly, someone watching decides to have a pop and I get bottled. It's not too painful, but if this broken table leg connects, it'll probably kill me. It'd be too lethal to use this leg against him. So I take him down with a simple punch and a kick. The first guy's still after my blood. So when my spinning kick misses, I opt for simplicity and make my escape. Maybe you didn't need that extra drink after all.